Praise the Lord. Good morning. Greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. And it is a joy and a great privilege once again to be here this morning to minister the Word of God. I trust the Lord everyone is in good health and happiness uh, regardless of the situation in the world. The coronavirus is still rampant in the world today. It's causing havoc in India. Over 150 thousand pers 150, persons has been tested positive in India for coronavirus in one single day. Praise the Lord, I was doing some research yesterday and I saw that um, they had 52 volcanoes eruption around the world, 52 in one month. My friends, we're living in the last days and things are happening. Hallelujah, things are shaping up. It's the beginning of the times, hallelujah, of the seven year tribulation period, praise God. Um, sometime before I did mention, and I had a vision, <coughs> I have dream vision, when I saw in the clear sky, and I saw in red the word 2020, remember. And it puzzled me what was it. What God was showing me there really, that 2012 was a danger zone. From 2012, God has given us eight years of grace period. I believe with all my heart it has begun. The tribulation period is about to begin. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you. This morning I will take a break from my regular message and I'll preach a different message. Is what what will happen. And those of you who missed the rapture, I hope no one has missed the rapture will look at this message afterwards. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. As I, I praise the Lord. Good morning again. And greetings to all my family, relatives, and friends, uh, members of Exodus Assemblies of God Church members. Uh, and followers, uh, church members, those who are viewing this message this morning, God bless you richly. I do love you in the love of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's a day of being a joy and a great privilege to be here this morning. As I always say before I preach, Jesus says, Lo, I am with you always. I will never leave you nor forsake you even unto the end of the world. Is that wonderful this morning? Is that a great assurance this morning? Without any shadow of a doubt, I can say that God, the Holy Spirit, is here with me this morning. Also, he said his words, healing is the children bread. And the first covenant he made with man was a covenant of healing. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. I am healed. You are healed. We are here this morning. I say in the name of Jesus. Receive your healing right now in the name of Jesus. Those who are sick, I release your he the healing power of God upon your life and receive your healing in the name of Jesus. I build a hedge around God's people. I build a hedge. No plague shall come, neither dwelling. No coronavirus will touch you. No coronavirus will take you home in the name of Jesus. I build a hedge around God's people, around all my relatives and family, and friends, and brothers this morning. I seal them under the precious blood. I build a hedge around my life. But the blood is so efficacious. And the blood is so powerful. The blood of Jesus repellent. It destroys every yoke and every bondage and every fetter and every evil and every book of darkness. Every spirit of witchcraft and obia and demonic forces and evil. I command to go in the name of Jesus. Set God people free right now in Jesus' name from every walk of darkness. Into thy hands I commit thy people and I build a hedge around the life of Father. I pray God for true peace and joy and happiness upon their lives. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. I pray God this morning also that you dip me in the river of liquid fire of the Holy Spirit. Anoint my lips, anoint my tongue, anoint my voice. And I, I pray God as I minister your words, your words will go forth on the anointing and power of the Holy Spirit. And many will be healed, many will be saved, many will be blessed, many will be encouraged, many will be delivered, many will learn from your word, many will be warned from your words of what is coming ahead in Jesus' name. I thank you for the flame of fire I received many years ago. I pray God your strength wrap me this morning with the anointing of the Holy Spirit as I minister. Your words will go forth on anointing and power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. And amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord this morning. I give my regards and sympathy. Deepest heart friend condolences to Jaila Turman family. My brother love who lost his niece, Jem the Rhine. Praise God. My deepest heart friend condolences to the family. Died from COVID 19. Praise the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, my message this morning, be, it's a, it has begun. It has begun, my friends. What's happening in our world today, it has begun. Praise the Lord. And I want to give you a little brief something before I get back into my regular message from tomorrow. Praise God. Anytime now, praise God, a world quick and a series of prophesied catastrophes will shockingly awaken the entire globe population. In a horrible, in a horrible way, God sent on parallel nightmare. Hallelujah. What am I saying? Shortly after this event, two more disasters in the form of two large meteorites will follow, causing more destruction, causing more destruction than many hydrogen bombs can, can really take out. In our world today, we have uh, eight weapons of mass destruction that can destroy this world 18 times over. But God has his own mass weapon of mass destruction. God has his own weapon of mass destruction. Praise God. Hallelujah. He has his own weapon of mass destruction this morning. Thank you, Jesus. And I tell you, my friends, the mass destruction that God has is volcano, thunderstorm, earthquake, famine. He has uh, also uh, uh, plagues and fire and flood and so many different things. God has his own weapon of mass destruction. And we are seeing that we are experiencing a natural disaster based on climate change. It is not so at this point in time. Oh, one, one will smash the ocean. Hallelujah. Many hydrogen, many bombs, many things, oh, my friends. One will smash into the ocean, destroying a third part of it. God bomb, I'm talking about. God way of destroying things. I do not know how we do it. Including the, the life there. It will actually turn the water into blood. And cause the and cause uh, and, 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 and of course destroy all life and every ship within its ring, according to Revelation chapter eight verse eight and nine. The second Metroid uh, Metroid will barrel into and flatten a great part of an entire continent, polluting the tall of the rivers and fountains, making them uh, poisonous with the battle causing wormwood. Many men will die of these waters. Following this, my friends, following this, an estimate 2 billion people, one third of the earth population, will be killed by fire. Killed by fire, smoke, lava like brimstone, according to Revelation 9 15, verse 19. That has to be a tremendous volcano. Eruption. One, one of these plagues begin. Life, once these plagues begin, life will never again be lived as we, as we know it today. Just before this incredible, unspeakable, uh, several months long nightmare, most people will be on their, their boring everyday treadmill of work, school and house cleaning. Some, my friends, uh, will be going to their social or political activities, looking for new forms of entertainment, buying, selling, planting, etc. Some will be planting, planning to pursue their routine of daily and nightly uh, presumptions and are making their usual plan of to foolishly spend their paychecks on Friday and Saturdays. Doctors and nurses will still think that the worst plague sent from God are today's, are today's incurable diseases. Viruses and bacteria occurring in, in epidemic and pandemic proportions around the world. Anti, uh, 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 in fact, uh, abortionists, uh, abortionists will be aborting their daily quota of innocent babies. Drugs, drug dealers will be peddling their debt. Uh, some schools, media and publishers, as well as motion pictures and television industries, uh, will both uh, corrupting and lying out to, to our children and the rest of the world at large. Hallelujah. Some of these judges and persecutors will be busy with their routine mischief. Mischief of, of corrupting justice. Young men and women knowing nothing of truth or reality will be planning vain careers and college, college educations or planning other aspects of their lives in a variety of other empty and unrewarding ways. Then to the woe and dismay of everyone. In the world, Jesus is commonly and falsely to the known as sweet Jesus, 
will outwardly, will without notice, turn the world. I says turn the world upside and down in a moment. And literally tear it to pieces. Again, one third of this world population will be inundated. Inundated, my friends. There are millions upon millions more will be killed in the most dead, dead, dreadful ways. Ways that could never be imagined or dreamed of by the humankind. Hallelujah. Praise God. Prepare your heart. My friends, I say, prepare your heart. Prepare your heart for sorrows. The people of this of the world need to immediately, immediately prepare their minds, their spirit, their heart, and their soul for these catastrophes, which will surely come to pass within this very generation, according to Luke chapter 21, verse 32. The world will soon know for certain, without one shadow of a doubt, that all these terrible, horrifying, shocking plagues are from God, not Mother Nature. Did you get that? These shocking plagues are from God, not from Mother Nature, as known as known. They are not natural disasters anymore. Read the Word of God for yourself. They will realize that these disastrous plagues, these disastrous plagues, are literally because the exact order in which it shall hit the earth is the exact order foretold in God's Word, the Bible. These plagues will be sent by God to destroy the bereavement of unrepentant sinners. In Genesis, God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, sinful, wicked, and violent, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually, according to Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. My friends, the earth also was corrupt before God. And the earth was filled with violence, according to Genesis chapter 6, verse 11. So God destroyed the world with water, the great flood. And the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth. And all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered, and the mountains were covered, and all flesh died that moved upon the earth both of fowl and of the cattle and of beasts and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, upon the earth, my friends. And every man, all in whose nostril was the breath of life, according to Genesis chapter 7, verse 19 to 22. In the days of Noah, God knows the end the same as he knew the beginning. For so today, I'm sure you can see the violence in the world today. The Lord hates sin. And the Lord hates violence, but God is a God of his word, and he states, whatever a man soweth, he shall also reap. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. The violence on the earth is far more than it was in the days of Noah. Except that the Lord has shortened the days, no flesh shall be, unless the Lord shortened the days, no flesh shall be saved. But for the elect's sake whom he had chosen, he had shortened the days. According to Mark 13, verse 20. The elect are those in the body of Christ, the new Israel and the new Jerusalem, the bride of Christ, the church, my friends, and the people who are saved in the world today. Hallelujah. Because sin and violence is more than ever before. God will not smite the earth. Set all the plagues all at one time. They will come in rapid succession. Prophecies of the sequence of the plagues will take place exactly as the Lord said. We are living in the beginning of sorrows. I says, we are living in the beginning of sorrows. We are living in the beginning of sorrows. I do not know if the, the, the church, the body of Christ, will go through the first three and a half years of tribulation period, or Christ will come before the three and a half. But the first three and a half will not be so bad, but the last three and a half years will be terrible. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. We are living in the beginning of sorrows. As mentioned by Christ in Matthew chapter 24, verse 8. What you see now happening on earth is merely the beginning of sorrows. These tribulations are on the increase. And they will be, they will be no one, uh, my, my friends, uh, taken away from the earth during this period of time. After the raptures take place, man has to go through the seven-year uh, tribulation period. Jesus says he will come immediately after the tribulations. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from the heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. 
And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribe of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds <coughs> of heaven. With power and great glory. Matthew chapter 24 verse 29 and 30. And the kings of the earth. And the great men and the rich men and the chief captains. And the mighty men and every bond man. And every free man will hide themselves in dens and in the rocks of the mountains. And say to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day, for the great day of the Lord, his wrath is come. And who shall be able to stand according to Revelation chapter 6, verse 15 and 17? In view of the fact that the prophecies leading to God's wrath, wrathful judgment have been fulfilled in this place in time. People who don't believe the forthcoming prophecies of these judgmental plagues, my friends, from God don't believe that the Bible is literally, is literally as well as symbolically, as symbolic. But the, the symbolic symbolism are, are, are all symbolic of literal plagues. Literal plagues regarding the end of the world. Did you get that? The end of time are in danger of losing their lives as well as their immoral souls. People who don't believe that God means what he says are, are committing suicide. Spiritual and physical suicide. No prophecy was fulfilled and is on record. Everyone died and went to hell. With the exception of the prophet Noah and the seven members of his immediate family. It was mass suicide. His history is repeating itself. I say history is repeating itself. All of the world conditions are in the exact position that the Bible states they will be in, in when the events will take place. These catastrophes, my friend, have already started happening. I say these catastrophes have already started happening, my friends. The pestilence, the incurable sickness like COVID-19, disease, and infirmities, earthquakes and famines and violence and tornadoes and thunderstorms and volcanoes and all the others. Many believe it is unsafe to leave their homes, but hiding in your house does not hide you from the eyes of God. I says hiding from your house, hiding in your house does not hide you from the eyes of God. Hallelujah. God, the Holy Spirit, is everywhere. I says, God, the Holy Spirit, is everywhere. He sees everything and knows everything. Hallelujah. Even the very intent of your heart, according to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Doctors and pastoralists agency, because of many incurable bacteria and virus agree with God, with God and me. There is nothing man can do. I says there is nothing man can do. We are in the hands of Almighty God. I says there is nothing man can do. We are in the hands of Almighty God. I warn you with the utmost gravity. I warn you with the utmost gravity. Prepare to meet thy God. Prepare to meet thy God. Hallelujah. This, the misleading false doctrines of the one world religious, religious and political collusion. Collusion, my friends, known on earth as the New World Order. The New World Order church government. I am known in heaven as the beast, the whore, the false prophet, the serpent and the dragon. And the devil will soon be over. I said the devil will soon be over. Everyone in the world must know, must now know that salvation cannot be attained by membership in any false religious or political order. But only through the blood of God's sacrificial lamb, that's the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ, our creator, the author and finisher of our faith, the head of the church, the head of the church of God, the beginning of all creation. The one who loves us and washes us with his own blood. He is the living, uh, spoken word of God. All things were created by him and for him. He is the Alpha and the Omega. I says he is the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end of all things and the end of all things. Total obedience on a continuous daily basis must be given ex exclusively by to this one and only Savior for he is the only only resurrection or resurrection of our own of our only life 
Without him, we cannot do nothing. Without him, we can do nothing. God wants to kill everyone in the entire world except Noah and his family. Because of their depraved lust for sin. And because they won't repent of it. It caused Noah and his immediate family so much trauma to see such as a mass suicide. I say suicide because it is suicide to not obey God. I say it is suicide to not obey God. And it is suicide to be violent again, again. Because, because my friends, God doesn't like violence. It's suicide to commit sin because God does not like sin. Did you get that? God gave Noah and the seven members of his family some rock-solid, godly, verbal assurance that he will he will drown everyone in the world again. It had never rained on earth till God plagued of the, of the flood. Everything was watered from a midst, a midst uh, that came up from the earth. Uh, and God will destroy the world again, but this time, my friends, uh, by fire. God will destroy the world <coughs> by fire. But until then, there will be rapid sequence of plagues dashing the planet Earth to pieces. Dashing the planet Earth to pieces. Volcano, tornado, thunderstorm, and plagues like coronavirus and rain, what is what they call it, all these plagues and tornado and thunderstorm and volcano and hurricane, all these things. Hallelujah. Will just dash the planet to pieces. Some of the plagues that are leading up uh, is, uh, to it are the many incurable disease and, and, and infirmities. Incurable disease and infirmities. The plague COVID-19 is in our world today, which we call coronavirus. And very soon before it ends, the next plague will come, which is a boil of the skin. It's something like a hornet bee sting. Red and the burning like a hot fever and kill many, many will die. Millions upon millions will die. As well as the earthquakes, the famine and the floods. The earth has never experienced a world quake of such huge magnitude. Nor any of the other terrifying soon to arrive plague from God. Listen to the prophet this morning. Hallelujah. It is coming when the whole world is moved out of its herb and unseen, unheard, or events will occur. Everyone on earth and at sea will experience simultaneously, never before heard, loud voices from heaven. Unheard of defining pleas of thunder on every continent and at sea. And never before seen boats and flashes of lightning and making the world quicker, more gruesome and eerie than human minds can comprehend. My friends, the impact, the chilling fearfulness of all, of all this will be felt deep into the very core of every innermost being, my friends. Hallelujah. Every sinner and every saint will know the feel that this source of horrible anger being unleashed upon earth is from the very throne of the living God. The wrath of the Lamb, Jesus Christ himself, even the deaf, the blind alone and everyone else will know and feel this is coming from God. Hallelujah. Praise God, the prophet Isaiah foretold of the same event. When he, God, arises to shake terrible the earth, the earth shall reel on to and fro like a drunkard. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall be removed like a cottage. When this, earth, when this world quake and the other judgmental plagues are happening, the last thing the people of the world want to do is to hold some false plastic religious ceremonial rites, run for the plastic or metal sorcery, breeds or statue, light candles, ring bells, my friends, or take a time to put on religious gowns, <coughs> choir robes or little hats or other uh, <coughs> non-social, futile things. Which some religious people do think, do thinking they are pleasing God. Then in reality, these uh, nonsense only enrages and infrips uh, God all the more. Because he doesn't like those sorts of things. I says God does not like those sorts of things. But not a form of godliness, but denying the power of God thereof. As a matter of fact, he hate these things because they are both foolish and blasphemous. They don't, they don't acknowledge God's precious Son, Jesus Christ. 
who died, my friends, who died for all for death, and, and, and more than, than keen, uh, bloodless, lampless sacrifice did. Another thing the enlightened, ungodly people of the world should not do is try to get in touch with any false prophet, preacher or teacher who told them to, to do these foolish, infiltrating things in the first place. Remember, these individuals are the very ones that lied to them in the first place by telling them that God the Father, that God the Father, the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the triune God, will never do such as wreck, wreck the world, kill all the unrepentant sinner in it, and then send their souls to hell. As you will clearly be able to see that God, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit, the triune God, are doing. It won't do any good to attempt to call the church government agency and have exalted themselves above God. Those that people trust in and sold their souls for. All the four lines will be unfunctional. I says all the four lines will be unfunctional. In your homes or business as well as in your every governmental building and police agency. What could government workers or police agency do against God's wrath? <coughs> anyway, nothing. They'll be in the same panic-stricken boat as you. All the beloved health, health or organization will be far too busy tempting to hide themselves from the wrath of God. They and no one else will be able to help anyone during the time of God's, God's wrath, my friends. Those who have committed their lives to Satan and his new world order, church state, will know that there is no escape for them. The rock and the mountains will not be sufficient to cover or hide them from the face of God that sitteth on the throne in heaven and from the wrath of the Lamb Jesus. And it is then that the world will come to the sharp, sharp realization uh, that those who preach, those who preach the truth of these coming events of God, judgment, the wrath of God, which has already begun, were not dangerous cult leaders and haters at all, but instead were sent in love and mercy from God to warn the world, to warn the world of the truth of God's requirement for salvation and for escaping the, the justifiable wrath of God. They were merciful, mercifully sent to tell people how their souls might be spared from an eternity, from an eternity, my friends, <coughs> even more severe judgment than the one they are currently experiencing. At the time of these uh, God's judgment, the world realizes also that he, he who sits on the throne in heaven, his son Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit are all in one. The true God and their person personalities today are the same as they always have been and always will be. This terrible wrath is coming directly from them. Hallelujah. As my friends, as God promised it will. He is a God of his word. I says he is a God of his word. Because people have refused to believe God's holy word. Instead choosing to believe Satan and his false prophets. Words are committing mass suicide. God, for our benefits, uh, in, his, in His kind mercy, recording in this world what His true nature and personality is. God wants everybody in this world to know that He is. He is not, uh, He is not, my friends, ashamed or angry of Himself. But instead, He's very angry at Satan. His angels and all those of the world who have followed Satan and refused to repent of their sins. God is angry and vengeful against all these who have rejected his mercy. God wants everybody in the world to know that he doesn't appreciate but rather hates the false prophets, preachers and teachers. They have profaned, they have profaned his word by making him look like he was some sort of wishy-washy, soft and Satan and sin type of God. Or like some sort of infamous, limpy, risk, double-minded God. God told Daniel the prophet, this will be the this will be the fourth. Blas blasphemous Satan led kingdom of the world. 
It is written, my friends, all, all this, my friends, it is written, it is written, God's ways, God's ways are, are, are judgment. Not that God judgment, judgmental plagues have begun. For example, bacteria, virus, thousands of new strains of consort disasters like volcano, thunderstorm, or quicks. Thunderstorm, earthquakes, uh, hurricane, uh, all these famines and plagues, etc. The world is beginning to see that God, who foretold of his judgment, is not a killer. Even in the smallest sense of the word, God has shown the world before and is now showing them again. That he means what he says, God will not will give no comforting words with these last plagues. And as he did with Noah, he will not tell us. What thing will get better? He, he will not tell us that things will get better or there will be time for us to be fruitful. Fruitful, my friends, and multiply and perish the earth again. I tell you, I tell you, my friends, the world is heading for destruction. The economy is sliding. The economy will never get better. The world is, will never get better again. It's going down. It's going down because we're living in the very last days. Because the world is once and for all interverbically finished. The world is finished. There shall be time no more longer. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound the mystery of God to be finished, as he had declared to his servants and prophets, according to Revelation chapter 10, verse 6 and 7. Uh, let me tell you, my friends, uh, as I minister the word this morning, some of the plagues God states uh, will rapidly follow the above, my friends. I mentioned devastation. Just as the world in no time has never before seen rain, so also in the age no one will have ever seen the entire world engulfed, engulfed in fire. The whole world will be engulfed in fire. The elements shall melt with fervent heat, like the altar also, and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. It's something like EAP. Electromagnetic pulse will burn up the entire world. Second Peter 3 verse 10. The entire world will experience a hailstone of around 100 pounds each in weight. Men in their satanic mass, 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 mass suicidal nature will revive God with impetuous and reproachable scripture. That is an injustice to the divine majesty of deity. Because of this plague of hail, for his plague will be very great, my friends. All of men's blasphemous and other retaliation to the pain God is inflicting on these miserable wretches. Then it's futile. They only amuse God while they are raging. The Lord sits in heaven laughing at them. Hallelujah, my friends, uh, the one consolation about these plagues uh, that God is sending very soon to this world is that none, not one ever will die or go to hell at the time, the same time as they did in Noah's days. Uh, hallelujah, my friends, very soon in this world is that not, not, not everyone will die and go to hell at the same time as they did in Noah's days. Uh, this time, the time of the end, God is furiously more than ever with sinners not for repenting and following the holy standard after after the many years of hearing the Bible. Hearing the Bible message from ministers after ministers who told them clearly that God is severe judge against unrepentant sinners. <coughs> Hallelujah. <coughs> unrepentant sinners. Today my friends reprobate those that God did to the world when it was young. Having heard earlier plagues such as the flood, the destruction of Pharaoh Egypt and Egypt firstborn, the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, the destruction of Jericho, and many others, God will now cause the wicked men of his present world to be tortured. Today, America has torn into modern day Babylon, modern day Sodom and Gomorrah, men married to men. Woman married to woman, lesbian gay marriages. Oh, they've passed in Congress. They want to change what God has set forth. Mother and father, brothers and sisters, and uncle and aunts. They want to change all those things. They've overstepped the limit. God is about to plague them with burning fire. 
and prolonged the torture for some time because the rather than fellow follow Christ uh, and be, uh, be elegant, uh, my friends, uh, and defeat uh, fallen Satan. They have gone after the devil himself uh, who forced God, the Son of God, to do this world and die for us, making an escape for us uh, from these plagues and the worst plagues of all, hell and the lake of fire. Satan caused every single person on this earth to have to die. Satan caused every soul that is in hell and going to hell in the torture to be there ever, eternally. Eternally, my friends. And, this, and Satan that caused all the trouble that had ever been caused in the world. God offers absolute, absolute no mercy. Hallelujah. No mercy to the belligerent, defiant, unrepentant wickedness. Shown by the men, women, and children who follow the evil creatures or over this church state. My friends, it's time for the devil's debut. The devil incarnate and his church state are telling the world they have the true message of love. Peace and safety, it is now revealed how utterly hateful, hateful their profane message of fantasy is. It is, it is nothing more than a cleverly devised fable and pure fiction, my friends. This fable, when believed, sends its believers to hell forever. According to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3, these satanic uh, beings are very, the very ones who howl, who howl the true prophets of God preach it. The true message of love is God's message of salvation through Jesus Christ. I says God's message, the true message of love is God's message of salvation through Jesus Christ. God demands that you renounce every other religion or serve Savior other than Christ. That you reject Satan and sin and that you fear God and keep his commandments. Hallelujah. If you don't, uh, there will be his judgments. I says, if you don't, uh, there will be his judgments, his wrath and hell. Hallelujah. Many years ago, Los Angeles, a vibrating tone for because of the many thousands of aftershock after January 7, 1994, earthquake in Los Angeles, the earth opened up and a virus called Valley Fever. Valley Fever came out of the ground, making hundreds and hundreds of people sick. This brought to my mind once of the plague that will be sent soon to this world after COVID-19 and so much many plagues we have had since then. It may seem far-fetched and unbelievable, like clouds and rains did to the suicidal people of Noah's age. But of course, clouds and rains are common now. People can be assured that every detail of their prophecies will come to pass. God has allowed us in this great mercy to see a series of his prophecies be fulfilled before the day of the end of his mercy. My friends, I'm proud and happy to be born in the last days. When we are living in the very last days, and I want to tell you, many of you listening to my voice today will not see death because the mortal shall put on immortality, corruptible in corruption, and you shall be transformed in a twinkling of eye. For the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise, and those who are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord God in the air, and so shall he be in the marriage supper of the Lamb of God for seven years, and during the seven years period there will be great tribulation upon the face of this earth. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let me take some water for a second. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. My friends, I know that the Lord is inspiring me to parallel myself with Noah. To get my mind set for the events that soon shall come to pass. God's word is true prophecy. His promise of the earth uttered end by the destructive plagues as the sure as a message of the plague that he gives to the world in the days of Noah. The earth opened up in the San Francisco Valley, Los Angeles, reminds me of, of, of the scriptures in the Bible that tells of the, the bottomless pit opening in the earth and releasing locusts like creatures that torment unrepentant sinners of this world for five months with hurting stings. With hurting stings similar to those of a scorpion stinging a person. 
I hope it's not the hornet beast sting that is coming soon. The people of this world experience this plague will beg for death. God have mercy, but it will not be possible for them to die. These people will still live a life after God's world quick will have no experience, will, will only experience a small taste of what it will be like for them in hell, in hell fire. God will give the sinners, the unrepented sinner, a taste of what hell will be like before, before he destroys his earth. More than ever, now is the time to prepare your soul for eternity. I says more than ever, now is the time to prepare your soul for eternity. My friends, it is not too late. Hallelujah. It is not too late. Now more than ever, now is the time to prepare your soul for eternity. There are no other options than heaven or hell. God or salvation. God or Satan, my friends. God or Satan. Receiving eternal life is the only protection from God's plea. Which is including the final one, eternal hell. An angel in heaven with a loud song voice cried, a simple and shorter, a simple and shorter, but most important message to John. My friends, that message is fear God and give glory to Him. Meaning fear God and keep His commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. This is the whole duty of man is to fear God and keep His commandments. Hallelujah. Fear God and keep His commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Hallelujah. Praise God. This means separate yourself from evil, ungenerated, blasphemous, carnal minded people. And keep yourself holy because God is holy. God is holy. And without holiness, no man shall see God. Hallelujah. Praise God. God is holy. And without holiness, no man shall see God. Holiness is required by owing God, my friends. By cons consuming God's word on a daily basis. Hallelujah. We are consuming the living bread from heaven. The body and blood of Jesus Christ himself. By this habit, my friends, this practice, this ex exercise on a daily basis. The power of God to fit in Christ Jesus is given to us. It's given to us that we might withstand the wiles of Satan. Hallelujah. God's powerful nature becomes ours through, through Jesus Christ because by the Holy Spirit incorporated within His Word, He is able to dwell, to live, and to work immaculately and wonderfully within us. Hallelujah. Praise God. We became the temple of God where God literally act, actually lives, my friends. After receiving Christ. You and I, you and I, like Noah, will be shocked and horrified when God's judgment plagues occur. The purpose of this lit lit literature, this purpose of this message this morning, is for you to prepare your soul to meet God and to be ready yourself to be able to cope as Noah did with the impact of God's plague here, and my friends, uh, at, at, at the end of the world. Seeing this mass suicide will be tra traumatic. Will be traumatic, my friends. God's kingdom is supernatural and has all power. Jesus says, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. According to Matthew 28 verse 18. And every, every bed it is in his hands. Those of us who are born again of his spirit are kings and priests of that kingdom. God has fashioned those of us who are true Christians into a kingdom, into a kingdom. We, the body of Christ, are with him. The kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. The kingdom of God is within us when we receive Christ with the Father by the Spirit. According to Luke chapter 17 verse 20 and 21. The kingdom of heaven shall never be destroyed but shall stand forever. Hallelujah. Breaking every worldly kingdom into pieces. There is much more. If you read the Bible, read, uh, read the Bible and listen to this message. Listen, listen to all the messages I preach, my friend, and see, see for yourself. Send, uh, oh my friends, uh, any question, and the Lord will, will answer them for you. Hallelujah. Praise God. 
The people of today who will be spared will believe the Apostle John and Daniel message. And will yield to God commands. They will receive God mercy. Uh, those that do not believe the message of the forthcoming plagues. Uh, that are soon to utterly destroy this world. And do not yield to God's command. Are a suicidal. Are a suicidal as the world's inhabitants in the days of Noah. Who did not believe Noah's message of the flood until it happened my friends. And did not yield to God's commands. Thus we, the mass suicide of the world, Jesus told John, these things are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angels to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Hallelujah. According to Revelation chapter 22 verse 6. Jesus says, behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. At the very time the cup of the wine of the, the, the fierceness of God's wrath is spilling over, pour out uh, without mixture into the cup of his indignation. Revelation chapter 14, verse 10, and Revelation 16, 19, Revelation 19, 15. The warning signals of his impending final judgment are being in notice everywhere, my friends. Throughout the world, salvation for shorter, it is still, it is still available, my friends. But remember, we are at the end of time. Remember, we are at the end of time. It is the ultimate desire of the Heavenly Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. The entire world repent of all sin. I say this is the ultimate or desire of the Heavenly Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. That the entire world repent of all sin immediately, referring from, from any fall offense and defense against God, judge, government. Of just law and order. Non inheritance to God, law and order is sin, my friends. My friends, God wish is that the world accept his mercy. God wish that the world accept his mercy and forgiveness for all previous uh, sins committed by them. That he may show his uh, plenteous mercy through the faith in the redemptive soul cleansing blood shed on the cross of Calvary for them by the Lamb of God. God will forgive every form of sin of your truly uh, sin, sin core person. A very truly sin court person, no matter how large a sin, how many sins they are, and no matter who you are today, my friends. If you will, if you will from this day forward, allow the triune God to live in you and work through you, you will be spared. He that endured to the end in the service of the Lord shall be saved, according to Matthew chapter 10, verse 22. To disobey God and reject His mercy is sin. The wages of sin is death, eternal hell, according to Romans chapter 6, verse 23. My friends, soon God's offer of mercy to Christ will be closed. He said, soon it will be closed. When this happens, when this happens, there will be no more salvation. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he that is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. According to Revelation 22, verse 11. You still have time before the closing. If you accept Christ, you will be righteous. And if you reject Christ, you will be filthy. Accept the Lord Jesus Christ. It's just, it's just a waste of time and effort to work for anyone other than the Lord Jesus Christ. Or to have a goal, my friends, uh, other than heaven. If you wish to make heaven your goal, then begin now without any further delay. And say this prayer to him. After you say this prayer, then con continue in the Lord. For only those who continue in the Lord to the end shall be saved. According to Matthew chapter 24 verse 13. Let's pray this morning, wherever you are, in your living room, in your dining room, in your kitchen, in your office, in your car, in church, those who are here, whatever part of the world, my family, my relatives, my friends, members of church, followers, believers, wherever you are, pray this morning. If you're not certain about your salvation, make sure your salvation is secure and your names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Repeat after me, my God and my, my Lord and my God. My God, my Lord, and my God, have mercy upon my soul, a sinner. 
I believe, I believe that Jesus Christ is the only Son of the living God. I believe that He died on the cross and shed His precious blood for the forgiveness of all my former sins. I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. And he sits on the right hand of God at this moment. Hearing my confession of sin and this prayer, I open up the door of my heart and I invite you into my heart. Lord Jesus, wash all my filthy sins away in the precious blood that you shed on in my place on the cross of Calvary. You will not turn me away, Lord Jesus. You will forgive my sins and save my soul. I know because your word, the Bible says so. Your word says that you will, will turn no one away. And that includes me, my Lord. Therefore, I know that you have heard me this morning. And I know that you have, you have answered me. And I know that I am saved. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving my soul. And I will show my thankfulness by doing as you command and sin no more. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, my Father, I thank you this morning. I thank you for salvation. I thank you for setting my soul free. Yes. I thank you for delivering me. You have been saved, my friends. You. Your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life uh, if you have just said that prayer and if you truly repent it from your sin. God love you. I love you very much. Uh, do have a wonderful day. I love you in the love of God. God bless you richly. I'll see you tomorrow in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.